everyone it is danny and welcome to this update video i hope you're doing great and we're going to be talking about what is happening across the atlantic so as we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery there we can see that front still extended across portions of mexico going out uh into the atlantic we can see that main low pressure area up there with all that activity moving toward the east there's also another front that one will eventually dissipate and there's also that trough which is out there propagating towards the west. Now, as we look across portions of northern South America, we can see that there isn't a whole lot, but there is some thunderstorm activity developing this afternoon across portions of northern Guyana, even over into French Guyana as well, and other areas such as Brazil and even in some spots in Venezuela and Colombia, but there isn't widespread activity as of when i'm recording this look into the abc islands trinidad tobago not a whole lot mostly some passing showers now and then throughout the day let's go a bit further up north and here we can see that there isn't a whole lot going on but over in parts of central america there's likely been some periods of some shower activity even some heavy rain across some areas and extensive periods of heavy rain can trigger flooding there's also been some shower activity in Jamaica, Cuba as well. And for most of us, though, it has been a rather sunny, windy day as well for some persons. So nothing much is really happening right now. And that is the work of all that dry air out there. Here we're looking at the map and we can see that the dry air is pretty much dominant across much of the Caribbean, even in parts of the Atlantic as well. So it helps to suppress all that convection. So on the infrared satellite, we're not seeing all these colorful patches popping up here and there. We're not really seeing that right now. So we're in a more stable pattern. However, for some areas, there may be quite the rainfall increase, especially as we head into next week. So we're going to be taking a look at that. It's that same trough. Now, once it is going to be continuing toward the west with all the associated activity, if it is sustaining much because uh, it's going to be encountering some drier conditions. So if it is sustaining enough activity, then it could bring some rainfall to portions of the eastern islands, eventually continuing toward the west. And once it makes its way into the western Caribbean, it may be around the time when the current front is stalling, which means it's not going to be moving, it's going to be stationary there. This is the forecast, by the way, for December 7th. So there's that line representing the trough and there's that stationary front represented by those triangles and those semicircles uh, on opposite sides of the line. So with that front stalling, there could be a rainfall increase for parts of Central America, especially in the vicinity of Belize and Mexico. So of course, I'll be keeping you guys posted as it relates to that. And then of course, once the trough makes its way into the area as well, that could help to induce even more instability and rainfall. By the way, this is what Euro is forecasting through next Thursday. So not this coming Thursday, next Thursday it is the rainfall accumulation. So not all expected in just a few days or so. This is well over a week out, 10 days, and we can see that we're seeing some of those shades of those pinks and even those grays popping up as well. Rainfall totals over 15 inches across some areas. Uh, so we definitely want to watch parts of Belize going to Honduras potentially mexico and guatemala as well for that rainfall increase and other areas such as colombia that area offshore is quite active associated with the intertropical convergence zone and just outside of the caribbean as well out in the atlantic and offshore of northeastern south america now with the el nino pattern what we typically see is more wet and cool conditions across portions of the southern u.s here's a map depicting it and for areas up to the north going to the northwest and parts of canada it is a bit warmer than normal because what happens is that there is a little dip in the jet stream and now those jet streams they have a wavy pattern and those higher points those ends they represent ridges and with ridges there's usually above average temperatures it's a bit warmer and drier as well and then with those u shapes we've got trough in taking place that is when all that cool air from canada sinks down into parts of the u.s and when that cool air meets the warm air from the tropics we've got these major storm systems developing and that is exactly what is expected as we're going to be heading into the latter part of this week so let's take a look at what the euro model has to show so this is as we head out into saturday the 9th of december 
and we can see if you look very closely you can see those dotted blue and red lines those blue lines are indicating troughing meanwhile those red lines indicate ridging so some cool air coming down from canada meeting all that warm air and how is the warm air reaching up there you may ask well there is an area of high pressure out in the atlantic and winds within an area of high pressure rotate in a clockwise fashion in the northern hemisphere so that is how we have those warmer conditions feeding into parts of the u.s meeting that cool air and there we're seeing that precipitation forming and take a look at this big difference as we head just around uh, nearly 24 hours later sunday the 10th of december there we can see that major storm system developing and affecting parts of the eastern states and it will only continue to drift to the east and with that there are likely to be those wind warnings and effects severe weather warnings that risk of tornadoes as well and even flooding because a lot of moisture is going to be in association with the system so there will likely be a lot of flooding across some areas guys and all those green shadings you're seeing on this map they represent the precipitation rate so areas further to the north will be experiencing snow and not rain because of course it's colder up there but take a look at that front and now with that i want to go into the caribbean and as i was mentioning earlier with that trough and then that front which is expected take a look at this this is as we head out to tuesday the 12th of december next tuesday look at all this moisture in the northwestern caribbean so with the tail end off the front and the trough helping to destabilize atmospheric conditions in a sense then we would likely see a lot of precipitation building in the western caribbean so that may be yet another flood threat that we may have to watch out for as we head into next week but one thing for certain is that i'll be keeping you guys posted on all that is happening across the basin so again there's a lot of drier conditions around now so we're not seeing any major activity at the moment but in the u.s that storm system is expected and then that front along with it which will help to bring some increased moisture and rainfall activity to some areas in the caribbean and of course, if you're in parts of the U.S., do continue to monitor those advisors being issued by your local weather service on what is expected as we're going to be heading into the next several days to ensure that you are safe as possible and your loved ones as well. Because those impacts, which I mentioned before, will definitely be possible. All that flooding, even that snowfall as well further up in the northern areas of the U.S. and parts of Canada, as well as the threat of tornadic activity. Activity. So that is all for this video. I hope you found it to be quite informative, but if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll respond to you when I get the chance to do so. And remember to always be weatherwise.